roundabout, and vehicles basically have to um, go over what is similar to a speed table in the pedestrian realm, and also in-road warning lights. That's basically similar to the flashing beacons you would have uh, on the signs. You could also embed them into the pavement, so when someone's walking across the street, um, there is actually lights within the crosswalk allowing people to have uh, better visibility of the pedestrians. Again, these are, most of these features are things that are not, uh, you can't install in a typical traffic signal, but can be used in a roundabout. In the center is a elevated and landscape island. Again, uh, this is a safety feature, but I think also an aesthetic feature. It allows you to, there's a number of plants that you do, art, any type of streetscape can be done within the roundabout. Again, we typically do not want it to be a destination for people. We prefer to keep the pedestrians out of the center of the roundabout, but it can be a nice visual and artistic uh, piece within the center of this project. And uh, lastly is the raised spiller island. So as you're a pedestrian crossing the street, you have a much shorter crossing distance when you're within the roadway itself. Right now, when you're trying to cross this intersection, um, whether it's on spring, or Mars in the current condition, you're talking about you're within the roadway for anywhere between 50 and 60 feet. With these raised splitter islands, you're in the roadway for 25 feet or less when you're crossing this intersection. So in terms of the area where you're within the vehicular realm, there is much uh, less crossing distance with this roundabout than a typical intersection. How does it work? So I don't know if you need to press something here. I'm trying to guess that. Okay, so this is just a simulation not showing the type, the amount of traffic that is going through the roundabout, but I'll walk you through how vehicles basically go through the roundabout itself um, from different approaches. This will loop through a couple times here, so I'll catch them next time coming through. So you have these yellow cars coming along Mars. They can approach in two lanes, and in this case, both continue on to spring without having to uh, recirculate the roundabout. This is most, most similar to the Mars, the Spring Street that you have today. You kind of have that slip ramp along the side. Now we have some green cars coming down from Spring. Again, you could line them up side by side and have them exit along Mars. Next one we're going to catch is the orange when it comes back around. Phil, I think you need to reset this slide. <coughs> Let me ask questions. Sure. So on the left, the cars all stopped. Um, yeah, so this when orange car stopped. Is right. there a stop sign there? So there's a yield. So the, okay. basically, you yield to the vehicles that are within the center of the roundabout. Okay. So we'll catch it the next time they come through. And I have another simulation with a different arrangement of cars and their approaching lanes. Love um, the car on the right. Yeah, so, and I have that option as well. So the orange car, again, yields to the vehicles within the center and then circulates around. So that orange car, I think, is an interesting car to show because what it allows for is similar to where there's no weaving within the circle. If you're coming along Mars and you want to go to spring, you're on the inside lane as you're going around the roundabout, then you become the, you have the ability to exit on spring. So you basically did not have to weave, you didn't have to change lanes, and you become the exiting car on the next approach. I'm gonna show the next one, and walk this through this one through a little bit slower. Uh, it's just a different arrangement of cars. So again, you have the, you have two yellow cars approaching. This one is yielding to the orange car, stacked up side by side. Coming around the roundabout, one decides to exit off the Mars, the other one is actually circulating all the way around and making a U-turn movement. The reason why this movement is important is because one of the benefits of this roundabout for this type of development is the fact that, and you'll see in a later slide, the majority of traffic leaving the site is actually going back to 287. As office, uh, office uh, destination, a lot of people are going back to the highway. What this roundabout allows is for that U-turn movement to occur where someone can exit the driveway that would be on Mars go around the roundabout and go to 287. In addition, we will have the relocated spring place, which pointer went, relocated spring place, which is just off the screen here, where vehicles can make the left turn at a traffic signal and come down this approach as well. So being able to make a U-turn movement at this roundabout, in addition to having the new signal at, at spring place, is a benefit uh, in terms of being able to accommodate the type of users that be utilizing this building in terms of the, the um, vehicular traffic destination. But again, I'll start this slide over again so we can look at the other 